this video I'm going to talk about ranges, uh, the for each loop, which is a variation of the for loop, and um, show a first example of using a nested loop to work with an array-like structure. So this will also serve to help us ramp up to dealing with arrays. Now, a lot of the programming concepts we've been working with are general ones that you'll find in almost every programming language. Um, the ideas in code in the next few slides, in particular the idea of a range, is pretty much particular to Excel. And um, what we're going to do is look at using a range and contrast it with some other techniques that are more common to other programming languages. So first of all, an, a range is a collection of cells. And um, it can be a single cell, it can be a block of cells, a rectangular block, or it can be a collection of blocks. Um, to keep things simple, we're just going to work with the single cell or single rectangular block. This shows you how to declare a variable as a range, and we're also going to be working along with a um, Excel application. And in this one, let me just get it started here, and I'll use 10 as a size. Um, if we go to Developer, You can see here that there's a global variable called work area, and in the workbook open procedure, what I'm doing is reading the size, as you just saw, and setting the work area to be the range that goes from cell 11, the upper left hand corner, to cell of 1010 in this case, or whatever my size was, thereby creating a rectangle. So with this form of range, you give the two, two opposite corners of the rectangle, and it creates it. Okay, now the for each is used when you want to do the exact same thing to every cell in a range, which is often the case. So for example, um, here I have a loop that clears all the cells. So we also define the cell as a range. And then we say for each cell in the work area, um, set the value to be empty. So for each just goes through and does this to every cell in that range. I'll demonstrate that in a sec. Um, but let's also look at this one. Uh, in this case, I wanted to put the value 1 into each cell in the range. Now, it could have been any value, uh, but I chose that one. So um, let's take a look at how those work. I have the same code over here. So you can see that here I'm putting a 1 into each cell in the work area. And here, um, oh, that's not the clear one. Here's the one that clears the contents. Okay, so let's go over to Excel, and um, I'll run the for each loop, and you can see here I've put a 1 in every cell, and I'm going 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 uh, columns and 10 rows. Okay, and here's where I can clear it. All right, um, let's go back to the slides here. Now, Suppose you don't want to treat each cell in the same way. Well, then you're going to have to use a different kind of technique. And that's where we get into using a for loop along with the indexes that refer to the cells. So um, if a range is just a single row or a single column, you can use a single for loop. And let's take a look at that. For example, um, suppose I want to set row 1 to certain values. Okay, you saw I just did that by pushing this button. And let's go look at the code. So here um, what I do is I doing in my for loop, I'm going to make my column index vary from 1 to whatever the size is that I've chosen. So um, the first time I do the for loop, I'm setting cell 1, 1 to the value 2. Then the second time, the column index will be 2. I'll set cell 1, 2 to the value 4. Then I'm going to get a 3. I'll set cell 1, 3 to the value 6, and so on. And over in Excel, you can see that I have 2, 4, 6, etc., up to 20. Okay, let's clear that. Um, now I can do the same thing with a column. And here I've done three times the row index. And let's take a look at that code. So um, 
Here I'm setting everybody in a column. So in this case, the column is fixed at one and I'm varying the row. So starting with row one, I'll set cell one, one to be three times one, three. Then the next time, this is two. So I'll get two comma one and I'll set it to be six and so on. And you saw the results over here. There they are. Okay, so what if I wanted to set um, everything in the rectangle? How would I do that? Well, you can see that I'm going to have to change both the row index and the column index. Let's take a look at that happening. And here, some of them are behind the buttons, but you can see the effect here. Uh, what I did was add the row index and column index and put it into the cell. So if we go over to the code, um, let's see, I think that's up a little higher. Yeah, um, so this is where I would use a nested loop. So the outside loop changes the row index from one to size. And typically, people change the row index in the outer loop and the column index in the inner loop, but there's no reason it has to be that way. You could totally do it the other way around. And um, so the first time, I'm always working on row 1, and I'll do columns 1 through 10. Uh, then I'll do row 2, and again do columns 1 through 10. Then row 3 and columns 1 through 10, and so on. Um, Let's just go back to Excel and clear. And let's come back over here, um, set this, and do the um, step into. Oh, it's not going to let me do that. Let's go over to the... Uh, Excel. Maybe I can do it over here. Okay, so now I'm pressing F8 and row index is 1 at this point. Column index is 1. Row index is 1. Column index is 2. 1 and 3. 1 and 4. I'll kind of zip through here. Okay, row 1, column 10. That finishes that iteration of the inner loop, and that, then I go to the outer loop. And now, row index is 2, and column index is 1. And I keep going. I do this 10 times for row 2. So I'm up to 2 and number 7, 8, 9, 10, 2 and 10, done done. Okay, and now here it's three and one and so on. And I'll keep going till I do all of them. So, um, reset here and remove this. Okay, so um, these slides just show you the code I was just going through. And I just want to emphasize these are really simple examples. I mean, all I did was add the row index and the column index. I could have done something much more sophisticated. A good example would be making an amortization table, for example, something like that. So uh, this is actually a very powerful technique to let you go through and make a, um, a matrix, a, a, a layout of uh, the values you get by, by varying two things. And of course, um, by going to another sheet, you could have three variables and so on. Okay, so um, be sure to play around with this code. Make sure you understand it. What we're going to do next is go on to arrays.